It's about 10 years ago, uh, I went to New Zealand uh, on a lecture tour and uh, uh, I went just to the South Island and I would like to dedicate this lecture to my good uh, friend, uh, Steve Newell. Unfortunately, he died uh, last year and uh, we lost a very, very good friend and uh, we are all very sorry that, uh, yeah, that we will miss him forever. Anyway, he took us uh, to many places in the mountains, but also some other uh, people from the New, uh, New Zealand uh, Alpine Grand Society. Mount Cook, uh, as you can see in the, in the middle here, this is the tallest mountain in New Zealand, uh, Mount Cook. And that's uh, the place where uh, Edmund Hillary uh, went uh, to, uh, where started to, well, to get uh, enough expertise to climb uh, Mount Everest. And he succeeded on uh, 29th of uh, May in, in 1953. So this is the place where uh, it all uh, started for him. Uh, we didn't climb Mount Cook. We went to other uh, places in uh, uh, the South Island. Here, just a rough uh, picture of uh, the map. We uh, started in uh, Christchurch. Uh, we rented a car and we drove uh, this way to Lake Tat Tat this Mount Cook here, uh, Lake uh, Tekapo, then all the way south mm -hmm. to uh, the M Milford Sound where we uh, conquered uh, Gertrude Saddle, pretty steep, then to Mount Burns and all the way around here to Nugget Point and Muraki Boulders, back to Christchurch to give some lectures. And after the lectures, we went uh, to the Craigie Burn area, Mount Hutt and Mount Lyford. That's about the area we will see this uh, evening. A few uh, ac special birds on the island, of course, are uh, the kiwi uh, birds and the kakapo, which just a few were uh, rescued and are now safe on a uh, special island, and the uh, takahe, which is uh, uh, in the area of the, the Fjordland area. It's still his home, a very large, tall fly, uh, 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 birds. Okay, uh, as you can see, I was there in 2011, and I, uh, I should have gone, uh, I think, two years before or a year before, but then the earthquake came, and uh, so I decided to postpone my lecture, and uh, well, as you can see, it's just amazing. If you see this uh, for your own eyes, this is the famous uh, church, uh, all uh, collapsed, and I don't know, I've been not back since, uh, if it's uh, been restored. Uh, not far from it, uh, they were still working uh, to get rid of a lot of uh, debris and houses and, and, and which has uh, been fallen apart. And, but they were very uh, clever. They made this uh, kind of container uh, houses and also container shops uh, put together. And it, it, in a way it looked uh, very good. But we went for the flowers and Everywhere, I have to tell you, we were in uh, in uh, January there, the third and uh, last week in January. I think that's a good time for most of the flowers, but I can paint this uh, plenty there. Well, this is the very famous Christmas tree in uh, New Zealand. I like it uh, a lot. It's a very, very nice red flower, but I've seen also uh, yellow ones. Uh, mainly used in, 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 in gardens, but also in the big areas around streets as in, uh, just a, a tree uh, along the street. Okay, now we go into wild places. This is uh, Lake Tekapo, as you can see about 700 meters. And we, will, uh, we were there for about uh, two days and someone took us uh, with the car all the way up to Mount Edward. And uh, well, that's the good thing of, of friends in, in countries like New Zealand, uh, friends from the New Zealand Alpine Garden Society. They take you to the places you, you would never come along on your own. A lot of places are locked uh, by gates, so you need a key to get in or people. But like, uh, as you can see, a forward drive. And uh, here the first Raulia, Raulia Austras. I was amazed to see it on a very, very dry uh, slope, windswept and uh, just on, on a very, very uh, sandy uh, soil. A close-up of Ferrolia Australis in full flower. Uh, we can grow it in our country here, uh, 
Well, but you have to uh, protect it with like a piece of glass or something like that. Otherwise, uh, it won't stand a uh, lot of rain. And, and uh, the the mild winters here in uh, in uh, Holland, tiny tiny rosettes, uh, very nice uh, yellow uh, flowers. They can make a uh, well easily a uh, well a carpet of uh, a meter across. And this was uh, very nice too. Just growing into the raulia was this. Uh, you see the yellow berries of Coprosma patriae, a very nice compact one. Uh, it's a very small shrub. This is just uh, maybe a centimeter tall. Uh, a close up of it. They are crystal clear. You can also uh, almost see right through these uh, wonderful uh, white uh, glass like uh, berries. And one of the first acephillus. This is a very tall one. I've grown it in my garden also a few years. It's going up to 30 centimeters in diameter, a bit of spiny spike. Well, most of the acephillus are very spiny, so be careful. Uh, well, uh, just stay away at least a meter or so, otherwise uh, you will be pinched. This was uh, growing uh, almost next to it, the colobanthus. Colobanthus is uh, also uh, not too difficult to grow. Uh, I've grown it uh, several times in a pot, there are many uh, species around. Uh, some even like moss, uh, very compact ones. Hilligrysum, well, some, some well, stick to the old names, uh, but it's renamed, I think, Hilligrysum plumeum. Uh, and, 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 well, a coral-like uh, shrub, this is uh, the lower one, is about 30 centimeters. So it's uh, not in a very large plant. It has uh, yellow flowers, but uh, it was not, uh, oh, yellow, yes, yellow flowers. And as you can see, it's very, very woolly. It was much more compact. We can grow it in a pot here in cultivation, and it's getting much larger than here in the, in, in the wild. Nutterolia, well, this is the country of Rulia, as you will see more. Rulia uh, subsericea, uh, not very compact, but low growing, two, three centimeters in white flowers. But there are also gentianellas. Uh, as you can see in the foreground, ground, uh, uh, some mature plants. It is a very windy area. You can see the, the grass on top. Uh, it was really a windswept area. But uh, here you see a close up of it. It's a very nice plant and uh, not easy to grow. I've never, I got some seeds once, but uh, they didn't germinate. So that's uh, very often the case with gentianellas. It's very difficult to get the, uh, good germinating. Uh, Hebe or Leone Hebe, maybe these, uh, these days, a uh, very compact one, uh, 10 centimeters tall, a bit yellowish green, uh, not a flower, but a very nice compact uh, Leone Hebe, I think it is. Well, then we see a lot of sheep. And when you see sheep in, uh, in New Zealand, I, you always think about vegetable sheep. And this is this. Uh, well, you know how the name uh, comes to this uh, wonderful plant. These cushions are more than a meter across, which is what an, on a uh, windswept ridge again. And uh, it was very difficult to stand up even and to hold the camera still. You'll see more of it uh, later on during the lecture. And this was growing on this, also on Mount Edward. We're still on the same mountain. And this is Pimelia. Uh, Pimelia. Looks like, a, uh, like in between a Daphne and a, and a Hebe. A very, very nice scented form. Uh, a larger one, up to 20 centimeters tall. Uh, and this cushion is, uh, of this plant is maybe 50 centimeters in, the, uh, in total. Scleranthus uniflorus, a well-known plant. And the autumn is very uh, coppery in color. It's changing now into green. And then the Salmisias. Uh, a lot of salmishes, they're all, all white. Uh, some are very similar, some are not. And this is a large one, semicordata, and I think it's uh, very often in cultivation in, in the UK, especially in Scotland. A close up of the large flower. It's at least uh, five to six centimeters in diameter. But a very small one, Salmisia angustifolia. Uh, very small leaves, uh, in totally the flowers are up to 15 centimeters max. And as you can see, most of the flowers are white. 
uh, there's not much color in in in, uh, in flowers. Some uh, more, uh, yellow or white. And these are the smaller uh, salmicias. Unfortunately, not a flower here, but you see here the cushions. Uh, the the gray one is the salmicia sesame flora, and the smaller one here you will see later on as well. Uh, well, it's very difficult to pronunciation in English. The Philachne Kohenzoi. Well, I hope I, the pronunciation is right, but you can read it. And here it is in, uh, in full flower. It's a very, very hard, stiff cushion. Uh, wonderful, uh, tiny uh, white flowers. It is uh, the, 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 the style uh, just uh, sticking out of it. Anisotoma aromatica, uh, once I had it in cultivation, uh, not for a long time. Uh, there are several, uh, the smaller ones are, I think it's imbricata, and it makes a very nice uh, uh, plant in cultivation for, uh, for the leaves as well. And this is the, the, the bigger one. This can be up to 15 centimeters. And what you see very often uh, is the case in New Zealand, uh, a lot of plants are growing into each other, like a small micro habitat. Uh, more of that you will see uh, at the end of the lecture. Another hebe, a larger one, a bit bluish when the, uh, when the flowers are getting older, uh, uh, more sedum-like uh, thick leaves, and all growing still in a uh, very, uh, well, a more a, a gritty mix and uh, uh, scree conditions. A ranunculus, uh, we are now on Mount Dobson, that's still in the same area. Uh, Mount Dobson is a very, very nice area to go, but again, you need uh, the key keeper, otherwise you uh, cannot get up. And this Ronunculus was still in flower because uh, most of the Ronunculus flower early January, sometimes even in December. So we were lucky to see one or two in, in flower. And this was for me uh, one of the highlights there on Mount Dobson, Acephila Dobsonii, a very compact one up to 10 centimeters, not more, and has a beautiful flower, as you can see here. And you can see uh, it's nibbled here. There are some uh, hair uh, uh, over there and they just eat the, the edges of the, of the leaves. So, but uh, in totally, it's a very, very nice plant. Hastia sinclarii, uh, also, uh, a, a very difficult plant uh, in cultivation. I had once a seedling maybe two, three months and it died. It's so difficult. Uh, but in nature, you will see uh, a large plant up to 30, 40 centimeters in diameter. Um, and I was lucky to see even a few flowers. Well, this is uh, the area you uh, see uh, very often in New Zealand. Uh, vast areas with a lot of grass. Uh, this is now we're going towards Fjordland, uh, where it is a more wet area, and you just drive through these areas from Mount Dobson to Fjordland. And then you encounter uh, invasive plants as well, like this uh, lupins. And uh, they're, uh, well, the, it's very colorful, but of course, it's, uh, it's not native to New Zealand. And this is the, the famous. Uh, Kawaru, uh, Kawaro uh, Bridge, and as you can read, uh, there's the first time they tried bu bungee jumping in 1988 in, uh, in this place. So we had a, a close look. Well, uh, I thought I, ha I have my doubts to, to jump down. I, uh, I better stay all safe on the ground uh, and not jumping like her all the way down and uh, just uh, touch the water and uh, up again. So that's not my uh, piece of cake. This is better uh, area. So we are now at TNL Downs. Uh, that's really in the center of uh, Fjordland. We uh, stayed in a small cabin there. And from there, we managed to go into the uh, areas we wanted to in, uh, investigate. And this is one of the, well, it's very, very, uh, well, they say, about four hours uh, uh, to six hours return. Now forget it. If you want to get up and down, it takes a bit longer, especially if you see some plants. It's very steep 
and it is also for experienced trampas. So, uh, so you have to be skillful to get up, and uh, it was pretty steep. So this is uh, you're going all the way up here. Uh, so this is first uh, bit is easy, and then you go around the corner, and then uh, up there, and you look down into the Milford Sound. And now this is uh, for you. To, uh, we just stand there uh, in the previous picture, so you have to go all the way up zigzag and finally, uh, but it's spectacular area and beautiful plants as well, like this Chinchana divisa, a very, very nice one. Uh, I had this uh, for two years, uh, in, uh, even I flowered it from seed. And Craspedia uniflora, the, the white ones, there are also yellow ones, but the, yeah, the white one is up to 40 centimeters tall, I think. And the uh, Tuligoglottis lealii, the yellow one, uh, makes a very tall flower uh, and, a, and a big flower, up to five centimeters, maybe 30 centimeters tall. And there's a white form, and if the, the white form and the yellow form, uh, they cross, you can uh, have this form. So this is uh, the really intermediate uh, uh, color, a bit uh, pale yellow. We're going higher up, uh, Gaultheria, a very nice plant here. They're still uh, in wonderful in flower and in educatious plant. We're going higher up and even Ephrasias are popping up. Ephrasia integrifolia. This is just five to six centimeters tall, uh, pretty uh, large leaves. Uh, makes a very nice compact plant. And this year, I was very happy that I saw finally this one in flower, Urgia uh, cespitosa. Uh, as you can see, the leaves are very thick. Uh, they were in the full sunshine, and so not in the shade, uh, but there's always a bit of trickle of water in between the rocks. And this is uh, why it is so tough to get up. You have to climb up here, Someone's up there already, but this picture is uh, taken because of that. And there's Ronunculus, and here it is in close-up. A uh, very, very nice buttercup, uh, very compact, and uh, very nice yellow, large uh, flowers. So we're getting uh, higher up, and uh, new Salmisias are uh, uh, to be seen. The Verbaski, Verbaski folia has a uh, different leaf. As you can see, there's a very velvet uh, underneath and uh, the edges as well. It's a pretty uh, large flower up to five to even six centimeters, I think. Another one completely different, uh, Blondii. Well, don't say, I. well, Steve told me uh, all the, most of the names of the Salmisias because sometimes it's very, very difficult to, uh, uh, to identify them. And here is a, finally a picture of Salmisia sessiliflora. You see, we saw it before in flower. It was almost uh, uh, past flowering, but as you can see, it's very, very compact. The flowers are sessile on the gray uh, rosettes. And I, uh, well, you have heard from Michael Camelander, and uh, when I visited him maybe 30 years ago, in his uh, glass house, he had wonderful plants of Hectorella cespitosa in, 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 as a wonderful cushion plant. It didn't flower, but uh, I didn't know that I ever would be able to see it in, in the wild. It's a beautiful cushion plant, very, very compact with these uh, wonderful white flowers. Should be grown more if possible. Cayunihibi, uh, there are several, and this was, uh, uh, we were very lucky to see this in full flower. Uh, the, the, the leaves are a bit uh, bluish gray uh, in color and has uh, a lot of uh, hairs just on the edges of the leaves. It's a very, very compact one. But we are already at uh, 1400 meters, so we're almost at the top of, uh, that, uh, of the Gertrude Saddle. Just a wonderful picture, I think, of Salmisha hectorii. This is how it is growing in the wild between between rocks, a very rocky uh, soil, but still uh, pretty pretty more a lot of moisture. You can see there's still snow, uh, so it it is uh, uh, for a long time it will be under with the snow cover. 
uh, se fila congesta. Uh, when you take away the, the, the flowers here, it looks like uh, small palm trees to me. Uh, they're very, very shiny leaves up to 15 to 20 centimeters tall. And then for me, the jackpot, Rolia Bougananii. It was a beautiful cushion. Uh, the next uh, image will show you where the picture was taken. And this is about uh, one and a half meters across. So it must be several decades old. It's a beautiful plant. Well, here is the plant here. And this is Steve Newell, uh, but uh, he's on the edge. This is hundreds and hundreds of meters down. And he's just taking easy his video because he uses his video to take pictures because he take pictures out of his video to use for lectures. So uh, I was on the same spot to just make the picture, but it gives you an impression how, how the landscapes are. And uh, uh, down here is the Milford uh, sound. Just a few close-ups with some wonderful rosettes, a bit bluish, gray, bluish uh, rosettes of Draulia buganiae and Raulia grandiflora growing in it. But, well, the grandiflora was for uh, many years uh, in cultivation, as I hope still it is. Another close-up, and there's another plant in between. Aniostoma is uh, also involved in this picture. But this is beautiful. Sometimes you have to really go into close up to see the marvelous, yeah, like uh, yeah, uh, eyes. Uh, I cannot say it. it's beautiful. Okay, uh, this was the Catrus Saddle, and we now go to Mount Burns, a very uh, excellent place. Uh, again, you can you cannot drive. There are not many high passes, so you can drive up, uh, but. Uh, we had to walk up for maybe one and a half hour, and then we were in the middle of wonderful plants. And here we are, this is Fjordland area. So it's a lot of forest, there's a lot of rain. And uh, Normally I think it's more than 300 days a year there's mist and rain, but we were lucky. Uh, both the, the three days we were there, I mean, three days we had marvelous weather. So we were very, very lucky. Uh, well, you maybe have seen this picture in the AGS bulletin once, uh, the Kia uh, sitting there and when we walked up to Van Burns. And you can see that there's a lot of rain and a lot of moisture. You can see the moss hanging on this notophagus. So there's a lot of, lot of uh, uh, moisture in the air there. A few plants uh, on our way up. That was a thumbness, uh, a shrub up to well, almost a meter tall. Uh, the flowers were not open yet, but it, it looks looks nice also in bud. And then uh, a new uh, Salmisia. Uh, the Salmisia is uh, non-hairy, it's uh, glandulose leaves. This patch is about uh, 30 centimeters diameter, so very, very big flowers again. This was in uh, oh, growing in a more shady position. And then we're finally going up higher up in Mount Burns, and we are out of the forest uh, and they're coming up in the area with a lot of grass and these small ponds. And if you go around here, you'll see all sorts of uh, wonderful plants. And this is the Salmisia again and the Hebe in the front. It's just wonderful just to walk around and to look at plants in their natural habitat. The close up uh, of this Salmisia, as you can see, the, the flowers are completely different very, very thin uh, petals. New cushions, Donatia. I've seen this before on uh, Tasmania. Uh, these can make very hard cushions up to a meter across. You can just sit on it. It's hard like a rock, uh, but for me, very, very difficult and maybe impossible to grow here. It's just too hot in summer, but the cushions are just uh, wonderful. Very hard, stiff uh, leaves. <clears throat> And then uh, the Edelweiss from uh, New Zealand, Leucogenus graniceps. I think later on you'll see another one as well. Uh, it was very, very light uh, to make a picture. And then the white flower, it's a bit difficult. But anyway, you have an idea. And this is growing on a very, very dry uh, crevice in the rock. Well, enough for lo 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 this. 
Bellyrudoides as a plant just maybe 10 centimeters tall. Uh, I think it's renamed, uh, uh, but I don't know the, the previous name. Uh, it's it's well known on uh, on many mountains in in uh, New Zealand. You, you uh, see it very often. Another uh, picture of the verbasca. Uh, uh, sorry, the salmisia. Salmisia uh, flora was growing next to it, a very tiny one. Uh, Brachyglottis, not white, yellow, uh, very compact just uh, five centimeters tall. And then finally we reach more or less the higher spot of Mount Burns. And uh, the first cushions of Asaphila crossed by Smithii. The cushions are up to a meter across, very, very hard, like uh, the other one as you saw before, Dobsonii, and it makes uh, beautiful uh, plants. I had uh, uh, well, about 50 seedlings uh, two years ago, I had them for two years, and then suddenly in summer, they all went away. It was just too hot. And well, if you see this here in their natural habitat, there's snow nearby. We will quickly have a look what's growing into the snow there, because that was very, very interesting. But these are the flowers of the Asaphila. Uh, beautiful, uh, large flower heads. And uh, so we were lucky to see them uh, also some flowers on it. Okay, so we, we, well, if you have Steve with you, and Steve knew all the locations, yeah, he said, you have to go up here and see that. And so it's very helpful. Otherwise, you miss half of it. So we walked in between these boulders. And between the boulders are just the best plants ever, like uh, the, 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 the Ranunculus lilialii, the cook but buttercup. I have a super plant. Uh, the leaves can up to, well, more than 15 centimeters across. It's just an amazing plant and it can be very tall, up to 60, 70 centimeters. But if you see it there, it just, it's just, well, it can't be better. Look at this. In between these uh, granite uh, stones, uh, cracks, uh, this plant uh, opened their wonderful white flowers. Uh, just uh, next to the water, uh, again, this wonderful cushion plant. Uh, just an, again, uh, a picture of these. Are, this is one rosette. You see the, uh, the very stiff leaves uh, forming this wonderful hard rosette. A kelta. Uh, we were just a bit too early for the kelta. Uh, just one or two were popping up because the snow was, has just, uh, just uh, disappeared. It was uh, melting. Uh, so uh, Kelta Optusa uh, here uh, in big quantities, by the way. And then finally, we hit the jackpot, Ranunculus buccananii. And if you know that this is just melting water, this is maybe just one uh, degree above Celsius, because in the back of, of the picture is just all snow. And we hit the jackpot, as you can see, everywhere is a flower. And uh, maybe you, you have heard of Joe Catman. He's living is, uh, for 30, 40 years already in New Zealand. And he has been on many occasions on Mount Burns to see Ronakis Buganani. And when I showed him these pictures, he, I, he said, I can't believe it. In 25 years I've, be, I've been up there, I've never seen them so good. So we were very, very lucky that uh, Steve took us at the right spot at the right time, and they were all in, in, in full flower. Uh, just the white here on the, on the right side is all water running down. So the plant in totally with its uh, roots are uh, in ice cold water. So if you want to grow it, you probably uh, uh, be, have to grow it in the fridge or something like that. Uh, to, to make it work. Otherwise, it's very, very difficult to keep it in, uh, in character, at least to keep it alive. But uh, it couldn't be better there. Just a close-up of uh, Ronongus Buganani. Uh, just a few uh, overview pictures of the Milford Sound. We didn't uh, spend time on the, on the, to, on the cruise in, in between. Uh, to be honest, uh, my wife went on a dive uh, expedition uh, for one day 
uh, looking at corals and, and, and so on. I was uh, walking in the, in the forest to look at the plants. So we split one day and uh, she took this picture of uh, the, the seals uh, on this uh, high uh, big rock. This Dixonias are everywhere in Milford Sound, wonderful uh, uh, forest, uh, really pristine. And uh, this was the first time I saw Dixonia here in, uh, in New Zealand. Makes, uh, Dixonia squarrosa doesn't make very large white uh, uh, plants. Uh, Dixonia antarctica, which is uh, very often uh, a well, well known plant, I can make uh, a rosette of maybe four or five meters across, but this maybe one and a half, two meters. Nice uh, ferns just on the cliff next to the road. This is asphalt here. So we just parked the car, and here you see this wonderful ferns uh, hanging down the slope. And then we looked up and we suddenly saw an, an orchid. Uh, uh, it's now to, uh, now it's called Vinica Cunninghamii, but the, it's normally what it was called uh, Dendrobium. I, uh, it was far away, so I zoomed already in. So this is all, but you can see it's growing on these stems in the Milford Sound. Sometimes it can be very very windy on the coast. We are going now south along the coast towards uh, uh, Christchurch again. And this is at Cozy Nook. Well, it, I haven't seen uh, crazier conifers than here at uh, this place. And this is uh, by Papa Point Lighthouse. And if you don't know that you need to go there, you miss a lot of uh, a very special plant. Because if you look down here in the lower part, right lower part here where my arrow is, there's a special plant. And you probably, you see the next slide, you know what it is because you maybe have ever grown it. This is Cantianella saxosa. It's a well-known plant, not difficult to grow in a pot. You have to, uh, to grow it from seed uh, or make cuttings. And this is the, the real habitat. And the next slide shows you it's growing next to the sea. Well, if you have told me, I wouldn't believe it. You never thought of growing in Gentianella saxosa in conditions like this. So if it's not growing well for you, put a bit of salt on it because there's all salted water around. But we, again, we were very lucky. It was in full flower. And I'm sure there will be a lot of salt uh, going into this area well with, with all the sex, sex, uh, Gentianellas. A beautiful plant. Look at this. It couldn't be better. Sex, uh, Gentianella saxosa. Uh, this is growing at the same spot as uh, Celeria uh, radicans. I always say, well, this is, this, this uh, flower is halfway. It's not, uh, I miss a few petals, but that's how, how, it, how it grows. Nugget Point uh, was another uh, location uh, uh, told, uh, Steve told me, just go to Nugget Point Lighthouse and have a look uh, down at the edge here. And you'll see a new uh, Salmisia only growing there. Here it is, Salmisia linsei. Uh, well, this is the only plant I could take a picture because it's, well, nerve wracking uh, going down there. It's very steep, but at least I got a picture of this special gen, uh, Salmisia growing uh, near this uh, lighthouse. Okay. Uh, this was Nugget Point with the uh, Gentianella uh, saxosa. We are going now to the Muraki boulders. Very strange they are. And then we go to Christchurch and all the way up and end up our area and uh, near Mount Hutt and Mount Lyford. So we are here at the Muraki boulders. And the pe they just don't know what happened. These are uh, in, the, in, the, in the beach and they're still, as you can see, there's all sand here. And they're coming out of the sand. So by erosion, the sand is taking uh, out. The sand is taking out, and more and more boulders are just falling down, and they have no clue where they're from. Here are uh, my wife and me near one of these boulders, and you can see rocks are going uh, coming out of these uh, uh, very strange uh, uh, sandy beach. 
So it was a very, very uh, special to be at the Meraki. So if you go to New Zealand, South Island, have a look at the Meraki boulders. This was not, now we at the uh, Craig, uh, Burns ski area. We, we were there with uh, the whole uh, group from the, uh, the conference. It was so rainy, it was so much rain. It was amazing, but I uh, just took a few pictures. Well, this is fruit on Podocarpus nivalis. One moment. Okay, what's the better now? Okay. Sorry, my, I, fo I forgot to put my phone off. Okay, uh, this is the ski area and uh, it was so wet. It was raining, raining. So I just, as you can see on the picture here, of Prosma, uh, she's many eye, but it's beautiful. It's just very, very tiny, uh, just two, 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 three centimeters tall. And the Gaultheria, you have seen this before, just in flower here, uh, the white berries of it. Mullenbeckia axialaris. Uh, well, I've taken it out of my garden. It's a weed, it's uh, creeping everywhere. But if you see it here with all these berries, it's just amazing plant. It's just wonderful. Like this Leonie Hebe also. Uh, this uh, picture in total is maybe 15 centimeters. So it makes a very, very nice uh, plant, maybe also in a pot. Lobelia. I've seen many, many Lobelias also in, uh, in Ethiopia. And these Lobelias over there are six, seven, eight meters tall. But this is a very, very small one. Uh, still big flowers compared to the small leaves. Uh, just a centimeter and a half in diameter. Okay. And this is a well-known area to visit, Mount Hutt. Again, uh, try to get someone to open the gate for you. Otherwise, you have to walk all the way up and up and up. And it takes you maybe two hours to get up. And uh, my car is maybe 20 minutes, but even maybe three hours to get up. And when you are uh, uh, up, this is the view over the Canterbury Plains. You see all these hedges. Uh, there's, these are up to six meters tall. And uh, it's also done for windshield to protect the... Uh, all the, the fields for too much wind. And we went up and saw masses of plants uh, like this Craspedia incana, very, very nice uh, plant with uh, these moody uh, leaves. It's easy in cultivation also, but never long lived. Arulia, uh, a metformin one, Tenucolus, and another one, Rulia australis, a very uh, nice. Uh, silvery uh, leaves and yellow flowers. And this is not far from it, Rulia Grabra. So you have a lot of Rulias on Mount Hutt to look at. And here is the other one. And this is the better uh, New Zealand Edelweiss, Leucogenus graniceps, a beautiful plant. It was really the star almost of, of uh, Mount Hutt. Uh, this is about 20 cent, well, 20, yes, 20 centimeters in diameter, particularly large flowers. Look at that beautiful plant. Latinella atrata, uh, growing in the scree. Here you can see them in flower. And uh, it's not difficult. Uh, I think uh, a lot of uh, Latinellas are uh, uh, in cultivation and they make uh, very nice plants in the a scree area from your rock garden or in a trough. And here's uh, Hastia recurva, Var recurva. Well, these are the seed heads and these are almost starting to develop seeds. So uh, it's a very, very open uh, plant. It's, it's, it's very loose, but uh, this cushion is about, uh, well, 50 to 20 centimeters. Always growing in very, very uh, loose, uh, rocky uh, screes close-up of it. Very, very hairy uh, leaves. Well, I wished I have ever seen this in full flower, but uh, I was too late. Ronculus hastii, but at least you see the leaf and uh, you see the, the, the seeds, you see that here. It makes a very thick uh, rootstock, rootstock down into this uh, uh, scree conditions. And uh, 
Well, it is possible to grow it in cultivation. I've seen it in flower, by the way, in Gothenburg Botanical Garden, but uh, well, in Gothenburg, it's almost everything they can grow there. Also, Ranunculus hastii. And here, an overview of Morolia eczemia, the vegetable sheep. Well, this is the name, huh? vegetable sheep. You see them here grow, grow, uh, hanging uh, on these uh, uh, cliffs. Uh, just amazing. They were everywhere. And I just want to show you some pictures of it. Cushions of two, three meters across, maybe hundreds of years old. You can sit on it. It's very hard like a rock. Uh, very tiny, hairy rosettes. This is maybe three millimeters. And uh, here you see some flowers on it. Uh, well, the flowers are the red ones in the middle. They are really tiny. But it's, it's interesting to see uh, flowers you hear, uh, who you hear about, you see them in, in natural habitat, how they grow. And I already explained uh, midi habitats for other plants. You can see grasses growing in between. Uh, so uh, this is just the, the, the perfect conditions for uh, these plants. Okay, and I end up my lecture now at uh, Mount Lyford. Mount Lyford, again, you need the key to get up, but it's worth to get uh, it organized so you can drive up to one of the best places for special plants. And as you can see, no trees, you're above the tree line, and most of the plants are around 1400 meters. So it's real alpine area. And this is a, a special uh, Salmisia, Salmisia viscosa, but the silver leaf form. As you can see, they're all white forms and a few are uh, green uh, in between. It's all the same species, but the, the, green, one, the green ones are not as nice as uh, the silver ones. Look at that. It's just an amazing plant. So uh, they, well, it's, they call it silver leaf form, but maybe it's a uh, subspecies of it. I don't know. The pentachondra you can see here, and uh, the colteria with the white flowers. And this here is the, uh, the pentachondra with the red berries. And even in Wallenbergia, uh, so a family of the Campanulaceae. Uh, it's a, a very tiny plant. This is maybe three centimeters. So uh, we almost didn't recognize it because uh, as you can see, it's almost the same color as the rock has. So you have to be careful not uh, to step on it. A gentianella species, which is not uh, even uh, named. Uh, very often there are still areas with new plants to, to encounter and to, to, be, to be described. So this is one of them. Lobelia ruffii, sometimes it's in the seed exchange. Uh, I've seen it now in the wild. Uh, uh, it's growing just in, in a very unstable scree. Uh, this is how it, how it grows. Uh, the leaves are very large and the, well, minute flowers compared with the leaves. This is a very, it's, it's a crazy uh, little thing. This is more attractive. Uh, I just had a look in uh, the other day in my Alpine house and I got two seedlings up of Lichnocarpa carnosula. It looks like, uh, well, like uh, the entrance of, an, of an, uh, a deer. It's a, a crazy plant, uh, always growing in these creek conditions. So it's, it must be, uh, keep it on the dry side, I think. Another Raulia, Raulia bryoides. All the gray cushions you see in between are all uh, Raulia bryoides. And here is a close up of it. Uh, very nice, compact, round. Uh, uh, hard cushions, uh, sorry, uh, rosettes, uh, white flowers. There, it's past flowering here now. And another, uh, I think it's another salmisia growing into it. I know when uh, I was uh, starting with uh, alpines uh, many, many years ago, I got a, a leaflet or a, a, in a book, uh, and there was a new species uh, found in New Zealand. And it was called Rachelia claria. And just by chance, uh, we, we found it. And this is all there was. It's a very, very strange thing. Uh, it's, uh, we, ne ne we have searched for more. We found them, but they're all this small. But look at the rosette. This rosette is one and a half centimeters. So it's not very much. But look how hairy these are. So it's a very, very recently described species 
and we, we were lucky to find it on the Mount Lyford. Well, this is a, just an overview of the screes there. It's all screes, and you think there's nothing. Well, we have looked now in these areas here, uh, but now we have a look what's growing all around here, because in the distance you think there's nothing, but there are the, one of the best and most special plants. And here it is. This is about 30 centimeters, Hastia pulvinaris va minor. Uh, it's it's a, an amazing plant. I, I have I had it for maybe two years in the Alpine house and then uh, it was gone. I won't try again. It's too difficult. They don't like the, the, the winters and uh, I don't, I cannot keep it for long. And here is one of the largest cushions from uh, the, the right side to the end. It's about nine meters. But I think there are more, this is maybe one plant, maybe three or four plants together. But again, this is uh, maybe hundreds and hundreds of years old. And these are uh, the conditions where it is growing. Full sun on the, on the scree slope. And uh, it was just uh, uh, amazing to see uh, uh, plants like this. And they say this was one of the largest plants in, in uh, uh, ever found. And this is a close up of it. Uh, we were lucky, it was still has some flowers. You see the yellow small flowers here. And the, the, there's so much uh, hairs on the rosettes. It's a, a kind of silvery and it reflects the light uh, there. And it takes and it absorbs uh, the moisture from the air. And here's a more, even a close up. Uh, it's just a very, very amazing plant, Hastia pulvinaris. And this is uh, an animal which eats. This is this grasshopper is going from one flower to the other flower and it eats the flowers of the uh, hastia. So, uh, but thank God there are enough flowers and not enough of these uh, uh, grasshoppers. Well, here you see exactly a good picture of my, uh, micro habitats. Uh, this is the, 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 the hastia. And look what also was it all growing into it and from grasses. Uh, to uh, wonderful uh, Salmisias. As you can see, uh, still at the end of, well, this is almost the last week in January, there's still a bit of snow around. So uh, you have to be uh, really in the area with a bit of snow, then they are uh, at their best uh, with flowers. Uh, here a close up of uh, the Salmisia Icana and a beautiful uh, uh, cushion of uh, the, the Hastia Puvenaris. Well, and now I, I think I have still uh, two pictures to go. Uh, when we went out by car, uh, we just drove up and we did, we, of course, we looked left and right, but then you look at a different angle. Now, when we drove down, I saw yellow spots and we stopped and we couldn't believe it. This is all yellow. Uh, this is not the best picture, but uh, the next one is hopefully better. Here it is, Helicrysum coralloides in full flower and we didn't see it when we came up it's just uh, well it's not the right angle to see it so uh, here you see it is grow I've, I've I'm growing it myself in my glass house it's doing extremely well but never uh, uh, even a, a sign of a flower and look at this this is beautiful few full flower so uh, they can flower and they're not white and uh, this was the last picture. We, I took in, in New Zealand and uh, I hope you had a bit of an impression of the South Island, of the plants growing there. And uh, this is the last. And you can see how compact this is. It's a beautiful uh, species. And I think it's now uh, renamed. It's, but I still call it Hilochrysum Corolla Warriors. I think, uh, anyway, this is uh, the end of my lecture about uh, New Zealand. If you ever go to New Zealand, to the South Island, uh, there are much more um, better, even, even better areas to go to. But uh, we were there three weeks and we had about 10 days in the mountains. Well, well thank you everyone for taking part in this, our last uh, Zoom talk of the spring. Uh, I will organize more talks for the autumn and next year. Uh, like I always say, subscribe to the AGS uh, newsletter and details will be updated there. Also on the website,